Now, Speaker McCarthy, in order to become Speaker, had to cut some deals we still don't know the details <laughs> on. Do you think he's actually running his caucus, or do you think someone else is? He's not. I don't Who's believe, running it? I think you, you've you got Marjorie Taylor Greene running the caucus. I mean, and she makes very common public statements to that effect. Every time something irks her, she communicates that McCarthy is doing her bidding. And look, I'm glad that someone like AOC is pointing this out, but I think it's kind of indispensable at this point or indisputable at this point that considering the very narrow margin that they have, someone like Marjorie Green, especially because of how close an attachment she has to Donald Trump is is rising up in influence. And that's not good for anyone except potentially Marjorie Green. You're seeing more and more you know, mainstream coverage of this idea. So remember, Leslie Stahl interviewed Marjorie Green. Um, that was supposed to be part of her like normalization. She has since gone back to absolute crazy town with Marjorie Green. I think over the weekend, referring to Dylan Mulvaney as the country's biggest pedophile, which feels like slander to me. Seems like it's a factual claim with no basis whatsoever. But this is the this is the person who's one step away from the speakership. Remember, sometimes it's not even a full step. She is often now the temporary speaker as well. So this is the this is the position that we're in. Francesca, what do you think? I mean, I think it's good that she's calling it out, right? I think that it's important to say that the speaker of the house is running to the fringe and it's scary to me and it's ridiculous. And and AOC should know, right? Because and again, this is not to equate the two so-called fringes because they are not equal. One wants us to survive, you know, climate catastrophe, and the other wants to, yeah, uh, kill trans people pretty much and incite violence, and that's it. But AOC should know because Nancy Pelosi, you know, for better or for worse, she was very much in control and and did not let the squad kind of like run the table, even though God, if only, right? Um, so she, it's very interesting because she's seen leadership. Um, she's seen the ways that she was kept in line by Nancy Pelosi and sort of chided and whatnot. And then you see like wet noodle McCarthy, who doesn't do that, and it kind of is an emblematic of the entire right wing and the entire Republican Party, which is yeah. if. They are more beholden to a dude in comment section of, you know, like the daily caller than they are to their own constituents or to like any semblance of representation of the entire American public. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, look, this is this is the difficult position that he's in. And we, look, we knew even before, you know, like even before he got into the position that it was going to be difficult for him. I didn't know how individually important she would be. And at the same time, individually embarrassing, where even Republicans are like pushing back against some of the ways that she's totally thrown committee hearings into chaos. Look, the idea is supposed to be that in a representative democracy, anyone can get into office. And that has now been proven. Anyone can get into office. It doesn't matter how deranged you are, ill equipped mentally or emotionally to serve, how disinterested in the actual problems. That America is facing. She is, look, we, we've obviously had a lot of bad people in office, and we've had people who are individually more corrupt, definitely. People who've done more individual damage, definitely. But in terms of just not, you know, by constitution being equipped for this position and just risking so much damage, the more power she gets and the more people like her that she inspires to run, we're in like a, a particularly terrible situation right now. So, Anyway, glad to have Representative Alexandria Ocasio-Cortez, you know, focusing on that.